this technique I'm going to show you, I just learned, and it's maybe a variation of finger knitting. It's almost like doing a double crochet with your fingers, and it's probably something that a lot of third and fourth grade girls know how to do, but I just learned it when Anami Kunin was here for some felting workshops um, back in October, and so I'm doing the laces for my kids' pair of boots that I did in the demo here um, using this technique. So I thought I'd show it to you. Um, this is what it looks like. It gives you a two-colored cord um, and you could leave it just as is if you use a really strong, um, well-spun, um, tightly twisted yarn, or you could always do this and then throw it in the washing machine and felt it down. So um, I'm using a patternian type of yarn, which a lot of needle pointers use. It's actually three strands, and it's truly worsted spun, so it's um, pretty durable. And since I'm using this and doing a pretty tight cord, I don't intend to felt this at this point. But, um, you know, we'll see when I'm done if I change my mind. Anyway, to show you how to create that, um, and I've, I'm not sure if she had a name for it or not. I'm just, I've just been calling it um, the double crochet finger knit. <laughs> which may not be a very accurate name for it, but you start, and I'm going to show you with two colors just because it's a little easier to keep track of if you're using two colors, though of course you could do one color, and just start by doing um, an overhand knot um, of the two colors together, okay, so I've just got an overhand knot with the two colors together, and I'm going to start by pinching the knot with my left hand between my middle finger and thumb. And I'm going to take one of the colors, and it doesn't matter which, and I'm going to bring it up over my index finger. There we go. Over my index finger, and I'm going to bring it down and pinch it. But importantly, you can see that I have brought it down on top of my contrast color, which I'm holding off at a 90 degree angle here. So you don't want to bring it down and pinch it and have the contrast color on top. You want to have the yarn that's brought up over your index finger on top of the, the uh, horizontal color. Okay, so as long as it's on top, you bring it in and add it to your pinch. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do a series of chain stitch, but alternating, so you're creating sort of a double chain. So if you're a crocheter, you, you probably have an idea already of how this is going to go. But I'm holding my the contrast yarn to the right at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to take my index finger of my right hand, and I'm going to sort of pull open a loop here of the, the color that is up over my left index finger. So I'm going to open up a loop, grab this new color, now I'm going to switch my pinch from my left hand to my right hand, and now I'm going to draw down on and snug up that first color. Now I'm holding that first color, the yellow, off to at a 90 degree angle to the left, and I'm holding the pinch here with my, my right hand between the middle and, and thumb, middle finger and thumb. Now I'm going to take my left index finger, I'm going to come in and sort of open up this um, loop of green catch the yellow and bring that through and as I do so I'm going to switch the pinch to my left hand and I'm going to tug down on my right. Okay, so, and now we just keep alternating. So the green or the thread in my right hand is out at a 90 degree angle. I open up the loop that's on my left finger. I grab the green yarn or the yarn on the right hand, bring out a loop, switch my pinch and uh, tighten the previous thread, the previous loop the yellow. Now the yellow it was in my left hand and it's out at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to take the, my left index finger, I'm going to open the green loop a bit, grab the yellow, bring the yellow up through it. At the same time, I'm now switching my pinch to my left hand and drawing down on the right. So let me just go through this a few times slowly um, for you. Open the loop, grab the green with the right hand, switch the pinch to the right hand, r release the old loop, which was on my left hand, and draw that color tight. Now that that color is in my left hand, I've got it held out at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to take my left index finger, draw out a loop, grab the yellow, bring the loop up, release the green, switch the pinch, and draw the green closed. So you go in, you grab your color, switch your pinch, draw the previous one tight. Go in, grab your color, switch your pinch, and draw the previous color tight. And you're alternating right hand, draw the left tight. The left goes in and grabs the left color, you release the right and draw it tight. 
You'll grab your color, switch your pinch, draw it tight. Go grab your new color, switch your pinch, draw the old one tight. Go grab your new color, switch your pinch, draw the old color tight. And you're just going to keep alternating. And you really do get into quite a rhythm. Um, and so you can get a nice even tension. And of course, you could do this technique even with snakes if you wanted to. You could use, I've got these three strands of a Patternaean style yarn that I'm holding together, but you could hold a big bulky yarn, multiple strands of a bulky. You could hold a bulky together with a mohair. You could um, actually, the one that I did for my yurt bag, I used uh, three strands of a different color, of different colors. Um, and then three strands of a solid color. So it got, my braid came out very tweedy for my yurt bag, um, but it you know drew on all the colors that I used in the yurt bag. So you can really get creative with this. And um, whoops, again, just depending upon how big you want it, use bigger snakes or bigger yarns or more uh, strands of yarn. Since this is a pair of kids boots that I'm doing and they're pretty small, I don't want a big chain. And this is a heck of a lot faster than doing the snakes. So um, this is what I'm doing. And also because you can really play with color. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Hopefully it gives you yet another idea for a creative um, embellishment for your boots. It occurs to me that I should show you how to join a new uh, color or new length of, of yarn if you decide to do this um, double finger or finger double crochet technique for your laces because um, you may likely run out and need to add an additional color midstream because as with many braids you need to start off with three times the length of yarn that you intend your finished lace to be because that's how much length um, this braiding sucks up. So start, you know, if you want an 18 inch long lace, then you need to start with three times that in each length of yarn. So I started with 36 inches because that's what this Patternaean was cut to and I've run short. So I've already attached in a new blue and now I, it occurred to me I should show you how to do it in the green since you might not know. Um, I didn't know either, but I figured it out. Anyway, what you don't want to do is just overlap like in knitting and because then you're going to get a bulk because you're going to have twice the thickness here. So what I did was I took out um, two of the old threads and just let them hang for a minute. So I took one of the old threads and then I took two of the new threads and I started to work with that combination. All right, so here I'm ready. I'm on my green, so I'm ready to... Uh, pull up a blue, so let me pull up a blue, and I've already got my new thread situated, so I'm going to tighten down on my green, whoops, got to tighten all of it, okay, so I've tightened the old green, now here where I'm ready to start, because I want to add in my new one, I'm going to, I've removed two of the old threads, and I'm just going to let them, hold them out of the way, and I'm taking two of the new threads, and I'm going to hold that in, in combination with one of the old, so I'm back to having a three times thickness, which is what I've been working with. So I'm not going to see any blip or thickness in my um, braid here. So now I'm just going to continue on as if they were, that didn't get caught in the way it should have. So I am just going to poke it back through here. Actually, I'm going to pull that out. Okay, so I'm set up now to start my green and I'm holding two of the old threads out of the way. So I have just a single thread of the old and I've got two of the new threads that I want to attach and that's what I'm going to now pull through um, this, this old blue loop. So having pulled the green up, I'm going to do a couple of rows or braids, what, whatever you want to call it, using um, the, one of the old and two of the new and maybe a couple more just to weave the new ends in. And you have to be sure when you close this down that you're getting the old end along with it. Now I feel like I've done enough with the old end. I'm going to hold that last part of the old end out and now I'm going to bring up the third strand of the new and hold it um, jointly with 
the other two that I've already locked in. Now you'll notice that there's an extra length of the old. I'm just going to hold that out of the way and I'm going to cut that off afterwards. So um, I'm just using my finger to kind of hold it back here out of the way. So there's an even tension on these three new ones now and I'm just going to continue on um, as I would and I'm going to go up a little bit further you know three or four of these double crochets and then what I'll do is go back and um, just take scissors and trim these old and new ends that I wove in off. So I haven't done that on the green yet because I was just demonstrating it. But back here is where I worked the new blue in and you can see that it's you know no thicker in that area and it's very secure and tight. So I think this uh, is a good way to join in and unless you... Um, you know, have really long lengths of, of yarn to begin with, you're likely going to have to join at some point in the course of um, making your laces if you choose to use this method. So I'm set up now to start my green and I'm holding two of the old threads out of the way. So I have just a single thread of the old and I've got two of the new threads that I want to attach and that's what I'm going to now pull through um, this gr this old blue loop. So having pulled the green up, I'm going to do a couple of rows or braids, what, whatever you want to call it, using um, the one of the old and two of the new. And maybe a couple more just to weave the new ends in. And you have to be sure when you close this down that you're getting the old end along with it. Now I feel like I've done enough with the old end. I'm going to hold that last part of the old end out. And now I'm going to bring up the third strand of the new and hold it um, jointly with the other two that I've already locked in. Now you'll notice that there's an extra length of the old. I'm just going to hold that out of the way and I'm going to cut that off afterwards. So um, I'm just using my finger to kind of hold it back here out of the way. So there's an even tension on these three new ones now and I'm just going to continue on um, as I would and I'm going to go up a little bit further you know three or four of these double crochets and then what I'll do is go back and um, just take scissors and trim these old and new ends that I wove in off. So I haven't done that on the green yet because I was just demonstrating it. But back here is where I worked the new blue in and you can see that it's you know no thicker in that area and it's very secure and tight. So I think this uh, is a good way to join in and unless you... Um, you know, have really long lengths of, of yarn to begin with, you're likely going to have to join at some point in the course of um, making your laces if you choose to use this method.